Not that I hate her, I don't. Most men would despise a wife for becoming what Joanne has become, but I don't. It's just I can't live like this. But I don't want to hurt her, Martin. I just can't go on living a lot. Just close your eyes. Rest. When you open them, poof, she's vanished. The trouble is, she loves me too much. Deeply, I mean obsessively. If I divorce her, she will fall to pieces and I will lose everything I've built. It doesn't make any sense. You see the problem? I see that. But I can't be cruel. It's not my way. You think it's my way, Charles? No, of course not. That's why I came to you. You know what I do. I don't want to talk about it. We are talking about it, Charles. You're a fine attorney, Mr. Houston. You know what to say and when to say it, and what not to say. I've never been charged with a crime before, not any crime at all. I tried to be very careful, but when I slipped, you helped me. You made the jury say I was innocent, and I respect you for that, Charles. And I respect the arrangement we've made. We'll agree about the time, whenever you're ready. Don't worry, Charles. Trust me. Au revoir, Madame Houston. Bonjour, Madame. Howdy. Ah, Madame Colombo. Hello, Monsieur Gérard. Ah, ah, en français. Ah, bonjour, Monsieur Gérard. Très bien. Entrez, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Mm -hmm. Ça va, Madame? Comment ça va? Très peu, merci. Ah, asseyez-vous ici, s'il vous plaît. 
Asseyez-vous sur la chaise. Sur la chaise. Sur la chaise, oui, merci, monsieur. <rire> Alors, leçon numéro 3, oui. Leçon numéro 3. Leçon numéro 3. Opéra ordinaire, papier. Très bien. Pour vous, à étudier. À étudier. To study, right? Ah, ah. En français seulement. Tout en français. À étudier. Très bien. Uh, merci. Eh bien. On va jouer encore une fois à Simon Di. Simon Di. Oh, Simon says, good. Ah, ah. Bon. Bon. Très bien, monsieur. Simon Di, ouvrez la fenêtre. Ouvrez la fenêtre. Très bien. Simon Di, je voudrais une tasse de café. Café Oui. Simon dit avec de la crème. Avec crème. Mmh. Simon dit pas de sucre. Oh non, sugar. Simon dit puis-je avoir du feu? Ah, Voici de feu, monsieur. Excellent. Assez, vous, madame. Non, 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 madame. Simon n'a pas dit. Monsieur Gérard. I love you. And I love improving my mind. I have, however, been up since five o'clock this morning. I have done my laundry and cleaned my house and written to my husband. After my French lesson, I go to my job. Sort of a job. I think it's a job. But just for now, with or without Simon's permission, I think I am going to sit down. Souriez. Excuse me? Souriez. Four hundred words on the upcoming PTA show. Entertainment for the multitude. I'm in it, by the way. A little late. We got to the semi-semi quarterfinals, but we lost again. Star picture had the mumps. I did the Hadassah luncheon, but I missed the planning commission. Conflict with my daughter's ballet lesson, and I had to meet the repairman for my washing machine. You do a story on the repairman? Oh, I never thought of it. Good, that's a plus. Do you like this kind of work? Very much. I hate it. Why do you like it? I can do it. I'm good at it. I'm good at blowing bubbles in the bathtub. Mr. Alden, once upon a time I studied journalism. I even worked at it. I got married. I'm a terrific housewife. I'm the world's champion mother. I worship my husband and I still want something left over for me. Mine. Selfish. Just a few hours a day. All mine. Nobody else's. Six months ago I woke up and I wondered, whatever happened to me? I mean, Where am I? I can tell you. You're in the wrong business. Anything wrong with my work? I said six months trial period, Mrs. Colombo. Well, I tried. What about ambition? Person like you, I see all kinds of ambition. You enjoy doing these little jobs at home. I adore it. Don't you want to work for a real newspaper? This is a real newspaper. Real newspapers come out every day, not once a week. It's perfect for me, Mr. Alden. Real newspapers get sold for real money. They don't give them away in the suburbs. I love this suburb. What do you want me to tell you? You belong in the New York Times? Yeah. You want me to lie to you? That's what I want. You're not bad. That's a lie. All right, you're pretty good for a cop's wife. That's better. Well, am I good enough? Press time, still Tuesday, 3 p.m. You still work at home. I pay no phone bills. Minimum of 3,000 words about the streets where we live. I'll even take murderers, but we've been fresh out lately, so stick with the PTA. The weekly advertiser isn't just advertising, you know? I wish to God it were. Maybe I'd show a profit for a change. That is some important job you got. I think it is. You think it is? It is. One, two, three. Is this thing working? I can hear you fine, Mrs. Colombo. Roger, Dodger, you darling man. Mm. Are you all right? You don't look so good to me. 
I'm worried about you. Come on, out. Run. Play. Oh, you are magnificent. <laughs> I got your new extension all set up. How'd you do that so quickly? I don't know. For that, you get a piece of chocolate right. cake, Lucky. Oh, terrific. I mean, it's practically a real office. I am a very important person. Very busy journalist at the washing machine. Phone rings, I break my neck lunging for it. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, very vital message. Phone says, can Jenny come out and play? I press this key. Jenny, dear, it's for you. Like a duchess. Nice, huh? Very nice. Thank you. Joanne? You up in the bedroom, babe? Joanne, honey. Charlie, you home already? What happened to your case? Hey, uh, oh, what's his name? Mr. Telephone, come here for a minute. That goofy judge postponed the arraignment again. I didn't feel like going back to the office. I was just going to take a bath. Take your time, Joe. It's a brand new unit. I just plugged it in. Who's Charlie? Who's Joanne? Is it supposed to do that? Well, what it sounds like, Mrs. Colombo, is that somewhere in the neighborhood, there's another intercom, just like this one. When the cord is plugged into the power, and the machine is turned on, and you press this key, your voice goes through to your daughter's bedroom. Through the power wiring in the house, what they call a carrier system. Where is this other house? Anywhere. See, you got the same power lines, the same intercom, so you get their voices along with your lights and all that. Of course, if you don't want to listen, you can just... so much. I know you don't love me anymore. I just want you to like me, Charlie. We're gonna be fine. You worry too much. Me my whole life, honey. A beautiful lawyer husband. Sometimes, when you're so quiet, I'm afraid you're thinking about how maybe you'd like a divorce. I've never thought of a divorce. Never. Oh, I'd rather be dead than without you. <laughs> Just wish I could make you happy. You do. You will make me happy. You will. I promise. Oh, no. Well? I am wearing my new nightie and my new perfume and talking over my new phone. So that's everything you're missing, Lieutenant. <laughs> well, who told you to go to a police convention? Oh, honey, tell me about London. Oh, it's lovely. Can I go next time? <laughs> well, then I'll have to burn the nightgown. Oh, sure, she's still up. Jenny, honey, Daddy's on the phone. Get it in the kitchen. I am not Jenny. I am a computer. Whee! Whee! Yay! Yes, my dear. I made sure to drive your car. Well, it sort of whimpers. So does your dog. The rest of us are thriving. Daddy? Ah, here's the lady of your life. We love you. Consider coming home. 
Daddy! Mommy and me are going to be in a show. PTA. It's a secret, but we get to wear straw hats. I'm wearing mine now. What are you wearing? A raincoat in bed? How come? <laughs> it's daytime in London? <laughs> All right, Daddy. I love you. So does Mommy. Ah, oh, nah, she's just wearing some old jeans. Goodbye, Daddy. <laughs> See you tonight, babe. Don't you want me to fix no. breakfast, honey? Well, I had some juice. I'll get coffee before court. You have a lovely day, and I won't be late. I just might, Charlie. I'm getting my hair done today. A new way. I hope you like it. I know I'll love it. School time. My iron. Oh, now you ask. Boy, that's better than a soap opera. Life with Charlie and Joanne. Did you forget your books again? Mm, yeah. Here, honey, hold this one. Give me the leash. Okay. Let's go, White Fang. You know the beast. Ah, oh, we're off to the vets. Hurry up, honey. I'm late. See you now. Come on. Taking notes? Oh, no. I just thought I'd do a piece for my paper about a vet's waiting room. Really? I never met a real writer before. What paper do you write for? Oh, the weekly advertising. Oh. I know, I know. Come on. Well, now what seems to be the problem? Well, can't you tell? I don't know. Not right off. <sighs> He's got no zest, no sparkle, absolutely no enjoyment of life. I think he's very depressed. I see. How would you describe his normal condition? This is his normal condition. All right, fella. Up. Up, fella. <laughs> Come on. Up. Up, fella. Up. Up, fella. Up. Uh. 
This is a very sad dog, Mrs. Colombo. Can you leave him with us for a few days? Would you like to stay with the doctor for a few days, huh? Would you like that? Oh, he'd love it. How can you tell he'd love it? That he just got a little sparkle in his eye. I see. <laughs> Martin, she's coming, now. Then you'd better go. Give her time to see it. Don't worry, Charles. There'll be time. You won't hurt her. Martin. Trust me. Now leave the house. Steak. Medium rare, if she ever gets here. I mean, we did everything but check the clearances. This is, without question, the most stupefyingly boring conversation I have ever heard. Only for dentists, buddy. Only for dentists. You, you know how they got those bolts recessed? I mean, there is no way. You're lucky if you only lose a hand. Charlie, that was your wife. She said she'd be right over. Okay, right. The clearances was way off. I mean, that was the trouble all along. That's if you want to believe the specs. Please, don't scream. Do exactly as I say. I'm not going to hurt you. you to take off all your clothes. <laughs> no, it, it's not that. Believe me, I'm not even going to touch you. I promise. But you must do what I say. Trust me, Joanne. frightened and I know you don't want me to look at you but everything you're thinking is wrong I just want you to believe that I'm not going to hurt you in any way Please. now I want you to go into the bathroom do it for me Nice and warm. Don't let 
let yourself be afraid. We're almost home. There, you see? That's a very pretty hairdo you have, Joanne. But I think it could stand some improvement. Here, use this. You've done so well, we're almost finished. Please don't make me break my promise. Look, I'm sorry, Mrs. Columba. You're really doing very well. I'm just not with it today. Why, Monsieur Gerard, you've been hiding from me. One of my students died last night. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Miss Houston, you know her? I don't think so. Uh, Joanne had the hour before yours. Very nice lady. Very stupid accident. Electrocuted in the bathtub with a hairdryer. Can you imagine? As a matter of fact, I think we spoke the other day. Her husband's name is Charles. Yeah, Charles Houston. Says he's a lawyer. Poor guy found her in the tub. She's overdue at a party. He came back with a friend. Would you like to come home to something like that, huh? Charlie and Joanne. Joanne and Charlie. Excuse me? Columbo? Yes. Sergeant Norris. Oh, come on in, Sergeant. Police are usually allowed to use the front door. I tried. I think the bell's broke. Oh, that busted buzzer again. You know how to fix those things? I don't know. I never tried. My husband's the fixer around here, but he's at a police convention in London. You ever hear of him? Lieutenant Columbo? Columbo? Oh, Central Homicide. Yeah. Oh, yes. He's a very fine officer. Uh... I'm local, Detective Bureau. How do you take your coffee? Hot and black. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, thank you, s'il vous plaît. What? S'il vous plaît. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you called about the Joanne Houston death? That was just something I heard in their house last night. Oh, you, you know Mrs. Houston? No, nope, never met her. Her husband? Never met him either. But you were there in the house last night? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I don't even know where it is. Right. But you heard something there like... Ah, uh, telephone? No, no. I hear their voices all the time on a box by my typewriter. Voices come to you on a little box, ma'am? It so happens, yes. Mrs. Houston's voice. Did she speak to you before she died or after she died? Thank you very much for your kind attention, Sergeant Norris. Now, if you'll just get the hell out of my house. Oh, 
Excuse me, Mrs. Colombo, I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, no, no offense at all. You just look at me like I'm some bubble brain psychotic. Did I hear her after she was dead? What kind of a question is that? No, I'm sorry. Uh, can we start again, please? In here. This is an intercom. There is another one just like it in my daughter's room. There are no special connecting wires. They connect to the house wiring here. It works on a carrier current. Now, if you don't understand door buzzers, you wouldn't know about carrier currents. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Somewhere buzzers. in this neighborhood, there is another house with intercoms just like this. Their voices come through the power lines into my home. I have heard them. The telephone man has heard them. They exist. I know about two people in that house. The husband's name is Charlie, and he's a lawyer. Right, Mr. Right. Charles Houston is a lawyer. Right. Charlie's wife is named Joanne, and she took baths and French lessons. Now, that happens to be an established fact. I heard her language tape playing on that machine. I heard voices the night she died. I even heard her bath water running before she got home. I also heard another man's voice. His name was Martin. Now, Sergeant, it's none of my business. It has no bearing on my life. But as a reasonably responsible citizen, I would just like to tell you what I heard. And I certainly would like to hear, Mrs. Colombo. May I ask you a question? Oh, please. In the Houston home, do you have any idea where these little boxes intercoms. are? Intercoms. Intercoms. Do you have any idea where these little intercoms are located? Well, I think there's one in the kitchen. Charlie was drinking some juice. And there's one in the bedroom. Kitchen and the bedroom. Mrs. Colombo, I think you'd better come with me. Oh? Why? Professional courtesy. Yours or mine? Both. told the husband it was time to leave the house? Sergeant, the bath was running bath and Charlie was... said... Charlie... You won't hurt her. You won't hurt her. Exactly those words. That's what you heard. You won't hurt her. Are we going to start her. that again? No, no. Oh. Tell me again the very first thing he said. Who, Martin? The husband. Martin. No, the husband. The husband's name is Charles. And Charles. he said... Martin, she's coming now. Martin, she's coming now. Mm. Martin, she's... Martin, she's coming now, Charles. Uh... We can go in. He said, uh, Martin, she's coming now. Two. It's two keys, two locks. Ma'am? Why? Please, ma'am. Living room. This is the kitchen. Well, did you find it? What? The intercom. No. 
must be somewhere else. Oh, well, I know there's one in the bedroom. It's not in the tub. Ha, ha, ha. You knew it wasn't here. There are no intercoms anywhere in the house. Well, must have been some kind of coincidence. It must have been. Just a coincidence. A lawyer named Charlie. Joanne's French lessons. I just know there are no intercoms, ma'am. It was an accident, Mrs. Colombo. An accident. Wow. Thank you for being so patient. I understand. It's my pleasure. Oh, boy. I'm trying again. It's <laughs> barking. I think it's supposed to spark. Let me try it again. I fixed it. What? Anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Colombo? Bake me cake. Meal. Oh, you're an angel. I'll tell the postmaster. Ask him if he wants his doorbell fixed. Linea. Machine. Silence. Nécessaire. Opéra. Ordinaire. Papier. Possible. Potentiel. Principal. Populaire. Radio. Silence. Station. Suggestion. Télégramme. Téléphone. Radio. Restaurant. Charles Houston Law Office. Uh, hello, I'd like to speak with Mr. Houston, please. May I tell him who's calling? Oh, my name is Mrs. Mrs. Martin. It's a very personal matter. I'll see if he's taking calls. La description. Yes, Mrs. Martin. How may I help you? La mission. Mrs. Martin, and this is Charles Houston. La mission. Joanne? You up in the bedroom, babe? Yes, Mrs. Martin. La joie. Take your time, Joe. How may I help you? Joanne? 
I'll see you tonight. Yes, Mrs. Martin. Oh, I'll love it. Mrs. Martin, this is Charles Houston. Martin, she's coming now. How may I help you? Martin, this is Charles Houston. Won't hurt her. How may I help you? Won't hurt her. Yes, Mrs. Martin. You won't hurt her. Concentration is the spirit of our art. Yes, ma'am. Now let's try it again. And glissade assemblée. Glissade assemblée. Yes, I'm calling for my employer, Mr. Charles Houston. It's about a pair of those new intercom units he ordered through Instacredit on his charge card. <laughs> no, he did not receive the units, but he did get your bill and is threatening to have my fingernails extracted if I don't straighten it out now. Oh, well, the fact is, I'm at the courthouse. Mr. Houston is an attorney, and I don't happen to have his charge number Thank with me, you, isn't it? Stupid, but very I well. can give you his address. 15251 Ventura. You didn't just see me fall down. That'll be fine. If you can call me in a few hours, my home phone is 555-9861. Thank you. Oh, and my fingernails, thank you. Newspaper stuff? Sort of. Are we going shopping? I shop. You iron. I knew it. Well, my little butterfly, you're very intuitive. But come on. Dickory Dumkoff, did you iron your blouses? Then I'll strand up the clock. Get in here, miss. Now, get moving. The clock struck one. I know another one who's going to get struck if she doesn't get in here right now. Oh, Brad, I'll... Hello? Yes, this is she. Oh. The intercoms were shipped to Mr. Houston five weeks ago. Yes, yes, thank you very much. No, not tonight, Ginger Rogers. No rehearsal tonight. You get to work, young lady.
sweat. Yes, I'd like to speak with Sergeant Norris, please. Oh. Well, then I'll leave a message. Would you care for a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you. Mrs. Colombo, thank you for coming. Would you come in, please? Mrs. Colombo, I'm Charles Houston. I'm happy you could join us. Would you care to sit down? Mrs. Colombo? We've never met before, have we? No. Have I ever done anything to hurt you? No. We live near you. Uh, is it possible I offended you in some way that I... No. Mrs. Colombo, my wife died by an unfortunate accident. Why are you doing this to me? When you called about the intercoms, I questioned Mr. Houston. I told him about your hearing the voices. Mr. Houston, the building manager's on line two. I would appreciate it if you'd hold all the other calls, Mrs. Pryor, except for Judge Myerson. We do need the continuance of 10 days. I still have to go to New York next week. I'm oh, sorry. What are you were saying, Mrs. Uh, Colombo? I found out that you had ordered the intercoms. Uh, this intercom and the one in Mrs. Pryor's office. Yes, I ordered them when the old ones became dysfunctional. They've never been in my home. They've been here about five weeks. The secretary has confirmed that. I'm sorry, Mr. Houston, but I did hear the voices. Who is this uh, Martin person? The husband knew that Martin was going to kill his wife. He didn't want her to suffer. And you're hypothesizing from that that I uh, had my wife murdered? Well, it, it couldn't have been you, Mr. Houston. There weren't any intercoms. Sergeant, have there been any other recent deaths in our neighborhood? No, sir. None. Mrs. Colombo, uh, your name is not uh, totally unfamiliar to me. I think I've read it. Haven't I? Uh, what they call a, a byline in that throwaway newspaper that we get. I work for the paper. That has nothing to do with what I heard. Working news ladies whom I've met and to exercise a strong, creative imagination. I think it has something to do with an understandable, excessive ambition, what's usually thought of as a man's profession. Well, I'll try to confine my ambition to reviewing the PTA show. For now, I have an appointment with my dog's doctor, which is probably just as well, because I've embarrassed myself enough for one day, haven't I? Mr. Houston, may I ask you a question? Yes, of course. The paper said your wife had just come from the hairdressers. I believe she had had her hair done, yes. Why would a woman with a new hairdo ruin it with an electric hair dryer? She never got a chance to tell me. Perhaps she didn't like it. I guess we'll never know. You think I could have figured that out for myself? I am afraid I have embarrassed all of us. I keep doing that. Mrs. Colombo, if your husband had been in my position, I'm sure he would have done the same thing. I'm sure of it. Well, you'll have to ask him about that, Sergeant. 
You'll have to come to dinner when he gets home. Oh, thank you. Dinner? He's like a new dog, Mrs. Colombo. Like a new animal. Vitamins, tonics, like night and day. A little science, a little insight, and he's a different dog. Doctor, he looks exactly the same. The same? He's got no zest, no sparkle. Mrs. Colombo, he's only a dog. He ain't Sammy Davis, Jr. My assistant will have your bill. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe you ain't Sammy Davis, Jr. But to me, you look like a philosopher. Oh! It's going to be all right now, Martin. I'm positive. It's so quiet, you can hear the carousel from the pier. We're not going to have any more trouble with Mrs. Colombo. Sometimes I can hear the carousel from my apartment. I love that. We have to be very careful, Charles. About everything. About Mrs. Colombo. You were not altogether careful the last time. The last time, I had a very astute lawyer. But my lawyer forgot about the intercoms. If I hadn't taken them out of the house after your wife had the accident... I don't want to talk about that, please. Well, what do you want to talk about? Um, uh, I'm trying to deal with our situation. You couldn't even deal with your own wife, Charles. Mrs. Colombo knows my name. I don't want anyone else hurt. She knows you bought those intercoms, I don't too. want any more police. She knows what Martin did. The police don't believe her. What else does she know? Nothing. Nothing. She doesn't even believe herself now. So, we're out of danger? Yes, we are. In your opinion. I'm glad you agree. You know, you frighten me, Mr. Houston. You're a very sensitive man. You feel these things deeply. And you know everything. Don't you, Mr. Houston? <laughs> Mrs. Columbo. Oh, thank you. Is this where it happened? Yes, over there. Yeah, I heard it on the radio. A police report prominent Los Angeles criminal attorney Charles Houston was a victim of suicide early this morning. What did they say? Yes, they found his body down there. I can't even bear to look. 
then don't look. Is that what you're still investigating, Sergeant? What's that? A suicide? Well, a, uh, a police officer found a locked car registered to Mr. Houston. I'm having it open. Oh. I like drumsticks. I love them. Ah, thanks. Excuse me. Any clues? No, no clues. And no suicide note, huh? No, there's no suicide note. I don't see any yet. Well, it's a map. It wasn't suicide, you know. Mrs. Colombo. Charles Houston wanted the judge to give him a continuance for 10 days so he could go to New York. People who want things like that on contemplating suicide, such. That's absurd. With all due respect, ma'am, what a man says at 2 in the afternoon and what he feels at 2 in the morning, those are two different things. Despondent, his wife dead, blaming himself, maybe. Why would poor Charlie blame himself? Martin killed Joanne. I think Martin killed Charlie, too. Mrs. Colombo, I really don't want to go on with this anymore. Oh, but I think you have to, Sergeant. Why do I have to? Because you have to figure out why a man who was going to throw himself over a cliff went to the trouble of walking his car. Mrs. Colombo, just a minute. He's away, and I really wanted to surprise him. Is your surprise easy? How much? Full tune-up, the top, the upholstery. Ugh. What happened to the upholstery? The dog ate it. It's all dense. And the new side mirror. Hey, job. Re-chrome, call it $5,000. $5,000? We'll throw in a free side mirror. I can't afford anything like $5,000. What if we didn't do the upholstery? Omit upholstery. Cut out $300. Okay, now you're talking. That's very reasonable. I'll just take the upholstery for 300 bucks. Lady, you want the upholstery alone. You don't get the volume discount. The upholstery by itself is $950. Oh, well, now that's very expensive, isn't it? Ma'am, you drive a foreign car, everything's expensive. You tell me what it is you want to cut out. <sighs> well, the tuna. What do you think? I guess we could live without that. And the top. Well, doesn't look that bad, does it? That leaves bodywork, paint, and chrome. Which one do you want? I think I'll just take the free mirror. Mm -hmm.
he was registered at your hotel with the police convention. I talked to him there in London. Uh, Ma'am, please, will you please check again? Two hours ago? Well, why did he go on to New York? I don't... Ma'am, ma'am, please listen to me. Did he... T did he tell you where he would be staying? Do you know the other policeman's name? No, no, no. I'm sorry, no. I'm sure he'll be calling. Thank you.
My name is Roy. I saw you come in. What do you want? I do the gardening. I don't know what to do. I don't even know if I still work in this place. Nobody tells me anything. Can you tell me? No, I, I don't know anything. You're going to have to ask somebody else. I just don't know what to do. I know. His garden said the same thing. If Mr. Houston had a partner, or even if his wife were still alive, there'd be somebody to tell me to close up the office or what to do with the files. How long have you worked for Mr. Houston? Eleven years. Now it's like I'm waiting for somebody to tell me, go home, Mrs. Pryor, it's all over. Only there's nobody to say it. It's all over. Ooh, la, la. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, I can't help thinking that policeman the other day. That Sergeant Norris had something to do with Mr. Houston's death. Why would you think that? The salads here are terrific. It all started with new intercoms. Mr. Houston brought them. Said something about a mix-up with the police, something some silly woman was saying about how his wife died. Eat. He brought the intercoms after Mrs. Houston's accident? Yes, but he asked me to tell the police we'd had them for weeks. You, you won't tell them I lied. If I liked somebody that much, I'd lie too. Would you do something for me, Mrs. Pryor? You're the only one who came to see me. Sometimes I work for a little newspaper. And Mr. Houston was going to tell me about an interesting friend of his named Martin. I think it was very important to Mr. Houston that I interview his friend. Do you know anybody at all named Martin? First or last name? Could be either one. We have a machine. Anything? No last name Martins in the personals. There's a Martin Reeves, Mr. Houston's florist. No, I don't think so. How far back do these clients go? Five years. Martin Elizabeth, Martin Eves, Martin Kenneth. Kenneth Martin? Oh, dear. He's only 14. A personal injury case. Well, can we try some first names? I'll get my book. Why don't you try 1A26? Martin Bader, 1401 Ocean Avenue. Such a nice, polite man. I knew he couldn't have done it. Not guilty, 1A. 1A? What's that? Murder. Mr. Houston defended him last month. He would... Excuse me. What, is something wrong? In 11 years, I never got the billings mixed up. We had to buy this computer marvel. May I? Certainly. It didn't send Martin Bader a bill. In criminal cases, Mr. Houston always billed in advance unless there was... Some special arrangement, and there's nothing like that in there. Can I keep this, Mrs. Pryor? Well, that's what it's for. Do you think that's the right Martin? I suppose I'll have to call him, won't I? Thank you very much for your help. Take care of yourself. Mrs. Colombo. Could we have lunch together again sometime? Oh, yes. I like that very much.
Hello? Who is this, please? Who is this? I don't care if the detective bureau closes at 4.30. I have to talk to Sergeant Norris. Now, 8 in the morning isn't good enough. Well, then, could you give me his home number? I know it's against regulations, but can't you... No, ma'am, I can't explain. I can only talk to Sergeant Norris. All right. If you'll try to reach him, then. Mrs. Columbo. What? Yes, with a C. He has my home number. Please have him call me back right away. Well, did you leave a message for him? Would you please keep trying? Yes, yes, I'll be here. I'll wait for his call. Thank you very much. Working, Charlotte. That's what I do. I work for a living. I'll be home in an hour. Mr. Alden, it's Kate Columbo. Please, Mrs. Columbo, I'm not a well man. I have to talk to you. At 2.20, you have to talk? Mr. Alden, please. There's been murder. Two murders. I'll take 500 words next Tuesday. 
This isn't a news story. It's happening to me. The murderer knows. I know who he is. And I am all alone in the house with my daughter. Now, you listen to me. You get your daughter and you put her in your car and you bring her here to me. Now, both of you. You understand that? Now. Yes, yes, all right. trying to reach Sergeant Norris. I am only going to say this once. There is no time to repeat or explain. Tell him I know who murdered Joanne Houston and her husband. His name is Martin Bader, and he has taken my daughter. He has my daughter. She is alone with him. I think they are at the Houston house. I am going there now. Please help me.
Hickory Dickory Duck. What? Listening to your house, Mrs. Colombo. Jenny isn't here. She never was. Tape. Where is she? Walking home. Probably home already. She wasn't nearly as frightened as you are, Mrs. Colombo. Don't be afraid. I was very careful. She didn't even see my face. Jenny! Jenny, can you hear me? Jenny, are you all right? Jennifer, are you in your room? Mommy! 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 Where are you? I can't find you! Better trust me. I won't hurt you. That's where I'll trip. A lady playing detective heard murders where there weren't any. While prowling the house in the dark, she tripped and fell down the stairs and broke her little neck. Gas. Gas. Why? Tell me. It's in the kitchen when I heard Jenny's voice. I thought the gas might make an explosion, drive you out, bring the police back. I don't know. I didn't have anything else. A house full of gas, Martin. A lady with a broken neck. They'll try to make the pieces fit. Mm -hmm. 